we asked 100 recent college graduates, what is the last thing you'd want your parents to find in your dorm room? Tierra. Use condom. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Top spot again, Tierra! How long do you have to date before it's okay to fart in front of your partner? Chad. Six months. Number one answer again, Chad! As an architecture major, if you could build a structure that would represent your student debt, what would it be? It'd be a giant middle finger. Yeah. Woo! Woo! What an awesome show. Uh, that's the show. This is the guest. This is Michael Torpy. That was paid off with Michael Torpy, which can be seen on True TV every... Every Tuesday, 10 p.m. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. By the way, let, let's do this. Can we get a shot of, of our great young producer, Gina? Gina, the reason we have you here for just a moment or so is to clarify that you are one of the millions and millions, as opposed to Carl Sagan. You don't even know who that is. <laughs> billions and billions. Millions and millions of young Americans who have big college debt, correct? Absolutely, yes, How I bad? do. Bad, I'm over $100,000 in oh. student debt. Just for four years. And we pay you what, 250, 250,000 a year? Yes. It's a joke for public yeah. television. That would be great. <laughs> okay, so, so without belaboring this, because Michael's gonna respond to it, how challenging is it? You work full time with us, you're terrific, but you don't make millions at public television, so? It's nearly impossible. I mean, I went to school for four years. I went to a private school. And you think like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go to college. You get the whole college experience. And then you get out, and they're like, oh, here you go. Here's all the money that you mm -hmm. owe. Um, so it's almost impossible. You think you can move out and yeah. get a full-time job, and everything is going to be great. And then it's like, oh, well, you have rent, and you have all this other thing. So, I mean. It plays on your mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's not cheap. I mean, they don't really have any sympathy for, <sighs> I have private loans, so. Ouch. They don't really have any sympathy for, for you. <laughs> Can you represent millions of others? 45 million Americans out there right now. Over $1.5 trillion of outstanding student debt. And you hear that all the time. Gina, Absolutely. we will not solve your problem, but we'll talk about you when you leave. Yes. Thanks, Gina. And <laughs> thank by the way, you. thanks for doing a great job for us. Oh, thank you. Okay, I wish thanks we could for pay me. you more. <laughs> thank um, you. Thank you, Gina. In all seriousness, when you listen to Gina, she does represent so many others. How, how much, Michael, does it play? I know the show is fun mm -hmm. and everyone has a good time, but it plays on them emotionally, psychologically, right? Absolutely. I mean, and that's part of the show. We, we're paying off debt for some folks. We're, we're giving away a lot of money to people. But I can't host 45 million episodes of this thing. That's right. So the show is about raising awareness. It's about, it's about telling stories like Gina's so we can put faces to the crisis and bring change through government. How'd you get into this? I uh, was incredibly lucky. My parents paid for my college education. They mm -hmm. took out a second line of uh, equity on the house. And they said, go get into the best school you can get into. We'll figure it out. And that's what they did. I was ignorant of the world of student debt. I was able to go do something financially, maybe sure. not the best decision of being a theater major. Not a lot of money right out of college. you know. And if I had owed over $100,000, I don't think I would have chosen that. I would have felt pressure to take, uh, to take on a major that I thought was going to lead to a job that would help me pay that bill right away. Even if you didn't love the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. Too much pressure. I mean, I applaud Gina that she's got $100,000 and she's in the field that she wants to this work in. This is what she wants to do. But in all I'm being very serious here, folks. It is not the place to make a ton of money. Listen, the people who are here, we love our work. You don't make a ton of money here. No. Well, and that's she's the trade-off. She's doing it for love. Exactly. So that's the trade-off. You have someone working in public television and she owes $100,000. So you're asking people who go into these fields, public television, she, public... she was in broadcasting and journalism. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you want the only way you pay off your debt is if you go into economics, you go work on Wall Street? What about the people who want to go work at the Southern Poverty Law Center? That's right. People who want to be public defenders. Making a difference. How do they pay off their debt? So the people that come on the show, even though it's fun and mm -hmm. a lot of jokes and, and people are pretty uh, engaging personalities, they are there for, for a very real reason. They Absolutely. need those dollars. Absolutely. How, how do you decide the winners? Oh, it's a trivia competition. So as goofy as the game gets, it's straight ahead trivia. The, the first part of the game is quizzing you on things that you learned inside a classroom, traditional academic topics. The second round of the game, which were in that clip, are polling questions, things that test how well do you know your fellow student, how well do you know right. your, your fellow man. And in the final round, you have 60 seconds to answer eight questions correctly. You can choose know your major or don't know your major. So oh, you can wow. say, look, I've been out of school for a while. I'm not using that sociology degree So anymore. if it's a political science major, you will ask questions about American politics. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can test, like, did you, you took out money to get this degree. How well did you learn it? What's it like for you on a personal human level doing this? Uh, it was 
unbelievably gratifying. I feel so appreciative of the people who came on our show and shared their stories, because it's all about that. It's all about raising awareness for this crisis. Uh, I had my appetite wet for doing shows like this by working on Orange is the New Black. I got to work in a show that was creatively satisfying. You played Seal Humphrey? Yeah, yeah, a real uh, piece of garbage human being, so. Clearly I'm, unlike <laughs> you, that shows how good an actor well, you are. I appreciate that, but this show I feel like is my, uh, my campaign to clear my name a little bit, <laughs> that I'm not the monster that I played on that show. Right. But working on Orange, creatively as an actor, incredibly satisfying, socially, unbelievable, having people. Big impact. Oh, women that were in prison coming That's up right. to you on the street, talking about feeling seen through the show that I was a part of. Unbelievable experience. And I wanted to do more work like that. And this show hopefully is entertaining and raises awareness and helps people out. By the way, uh, again, True TV time? At 10 p.m. Tuesdays. I'm curious about this. Your passion mm -hmm. for acting, your passion for the work that you do, Orange is New Black and other work, where did it come from? Uh, as, as a kid? Yeah, as, a, as a traditional... I don't think answer the question. Well, of course. You grew up in Jersey, by I the way. I grew up in Jersey. Glen Rock, New Jersey, not far from here. Beautiful small town. Bergen County. Absolutely. Class. I still have a 201 area code on my cell phone. <laughs> Keep that Jersey route. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a classic small town. You know, uh, train, two train lines running through, right. Fourth of July parade. Great little town. I was the third in my family. I think the youngest. Traditionally, you try to entertain your older siblings because you can't keep up with them in any other way right away. You know, like right. you're not big enough, you're not smart enough, you gotta make them laugh. So I think that was part of why I got into this field. I love the human connection. Um, I love meeting people and understanding them and I feel like I benefit so much from hearing more stories, meeting people who are different from me. And this show was another way to do that. You know, as an actor, you do that when you study a character. Sure. You gotta get inside their head, you gotta think about what's their experience. And ultimately, that then affects your experience. Are you a quote unquote a political person who wants to change public policy as it relates to the federal government or, and or state governments and how they deal with this massive crisis of student loan debt? Absolutely, yeah. I, I don't have all the answers right now. I'm who not, does? I, well, nobody, good point. Nobody has all the answers. But I do think there are some programs out there right now that are headed in the right direction. Debt-free college is something we should be exploring something that has a sliding scale for all students, people who can pay, they can pay, people who can't, they get the assistance both from state and federal money. And debt-free college also takes into consideration the full college experience. It's not just about tuition, it's about living expenses, right. books, because if we just cover tuition, there's 50% of the cost is still out there that's you know, gonna be on you to pay. You want this conversation to continue beyond the terrific show you're doing? Absolutely. Uh, the show is only successful if, if it creates a full national conversation. 45 million Americans. It's a huge number. It's too large of a group to be ignored, to only be talked about 45. in a 45 million with student debt. It's $1.5 trillion. It's only second to mortgage debt. It's more than credit card debt, more than auto loan debt. That's too many people to only be talked about during the election cycle. Yeah. Michael, we thank you for joining us. And, well, thank and, you for having and, me. And, the idea that you and your colleagues at True TV are doing this in a fun, engaging, entertaining way, but dealing with a very substantive issue is impressive. Tell folks again, the name of the show is? Paid Off with Michael Torpy, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. on True TV. Thank you so much. Steve, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Jersey Boy does well. Damn right. We'll be at least one of us. <laughs> stay, stay. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. I think at NJIT, there are a lot of smart students. I came to NJIT for mechanical engineering because within state, it's one of uh, probably the top three schools for engineering. It sort of creates a friendly competition where you know you can learn from them. It's a great academic school. I feel I'm being challenged, but at the same time, I love the classes I'm taking. The atmosphere of being here is like a being at an upstart company. It's that same kind of drive, that same kind of passion. Also brought to you by the New Jersey Education Association and by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey.